victory. The Lancers are heading to the title game in the Big South Basketball Championship. Welcome to the Coach's Corner. Jacob Bell here with head women's coach Bill Ronson. And coach, it was an adventurous week last week for your Lancers. You dropped a heartbreaker on Wednesday, but then come back against Gardner-Webb, one of the top four teams in the conference thus far, and get a last-second victory. Talk about the ups and downs of last week. Well, we knew it was going to be a difficult week. Both teams are very good. Uh, UNC Asheville is much improved from last year. And uh, Gardner-Webb, as you said, is at the top of the conference. Um, I think we played 20 minutes of good basketball in each game, and that's been a problem of ours pretty much all year. Being as young as we are, we're lacking consistency. Um, in the Asheville game, though, uh, we were down big at halftime, uh, made a huge comeback in the second half, and actually took the lead. Um, and it took a, a three-pointer, a clutch shot from Asheville in order to beat us there. Uh, then we go into the Gardner-Webb game, fall down by 13 again. This time, I think uh, we did a little better job of managing the basketball when we came back and ended up you know, winning in the last minute and a half or so. Let's talk specifically about those two games and how they both came down to the wire. For, for a young team like yours, getting that experience early on in conference play, is that big is, and feeling both sides of winning and losing a game late? Well, the, the, players, the players who were on the floor a lot last year experienced it a lot last year. We didn't win too many games where it was a breeze near the end. We had to make plays. We had to make free throws. So I think they've seen it, and I think they're a little bit used to it. Um, you know, but the problem is when you play those type of games, the percentages are going to flip in the other guy's favor, and I think that's what happened against Asheville. You know, you make that great comeback, take the lead, you know, only to have them make the play at the end of the game, and, and I think we're still learning as far as that goes. And specifically going to the Gardner-Webb game, you mentioned down 13 a couple of times. It seemed like at the beginning of the game maybe those first half problems had kind of gone to the back of the room and you were able to keep up with Gardner-Webb early, but a late run by the Bulldogs really kind of let them get into halftime with a nine-point lead and then seemed like they had all of the momentum and coming out in the second half, it didn't look too good early on. What was it about uh, your team that was able to kind of uh, quell the storm there and allow you to come back late in that second half? Well, I, th I think the biggest play of the game happened the first play of the second half. Um, Katrina Green's a very good player for Gardner-Webb, and she kind of clogged the lane in the first half. Uh, Heather Tobeck coming out and making that three early in the second half forced her to come out on the perimeter and guard Heather. Heather made another one shortly thereafter, which meant that the lane was wide open. Uh, and when you get the lane wide open and you have Deja Brown, that becomes a lot bigger weapon. Yeah, you mentioned Katrina Green in that first half. She was absolutely just clogging that lane, but she might be one of the best post players in the conference. How, how nice was it to see how your team handled her and, you know, she had about her average, but you're really not going to stop her too often. Uh, were you proud of the way your girls handled her? Yeah, I think so. In, in the first half, uh, we were out-rebounded by 19, which wasn't very good, and she was a big part of that. Uh, in the second half, though, I think we out-rebounded them by one because I think we mm -hmm. ended up losing the rebounding battle by 18. But it, it just proves, you know, the style of play. I think we wore them down a little bit with our pressure. And when you get worn down by pressure, you don't shoot the ball as well, and obviously you don't want to go to the, the uh, offensive glass as hard either. Let's talk about Brenna Robbins this past week, the freshman. She doesn't always do things that show up on the stat sheet, but each game it seems like she's getting better and better and more confident. She had a pretty good game against Asheville and had what might have been one of her best games against Gordon Webb. Talk a little bit about her and how that helps your team going down the road. Yeah, she's been pretty solid all year long. She had a, uh, a lull a couple of weeks ago, might have hit the wall, the freshman wall. But she's the type of player you can put in there for 25, 30 minutes and not worry about her production. She's going to do what you ask her to do. She's going to play hard. She's going to rebound. Um, you know, a stat line for Brenna Robbins is seven points, five rebounds, three assists. And if she can do that, play good defense in 25, 30 minutes, then, then we'll take it every game. Now, Saturday, it was a little bit of an aberration with Raven Williams. She only scored a few points late in the game. And when that happens to this team, how, how nice was it? 
to see your team able to step up, get a win, and other people stepping up across the board and creating that production when your second leading scorer has an off night? Well, I, I think uh, a product of that is when they were out injured. Raven was out for eight, nine games, and what happened was they had to learn how to take on the responsibility at that time. So the fact that she had an off game offensively, uh, we had people to pick up the, the slack for her. But uh, overall, I didn't think she played bad. Defensively, mm -hmm. she was into the game. Uh, she was a factor, and uh, her energy is always infectious on this team. So, yeah, she missed some shots. But uh, as far as her effort and her value to the game, I thought she was pretty good. Yeah, something you just said, you felt like she still had a good game. I felt like pretty much across the board you could say that on the game Saturday. And something else we've seen is just that increased energy has kind of been kick-started by press defense. You really went to it Wednesday against Asheville to kind of try to spark the team when they looked dead on the court and then used it some uh, Saturday as well against Gardner-Webb. And again, it kind of sparked a comeback and created opportunities. How has that press defense kind of come along lately? Well, we, we, we toyed with doing it at the beginning of the year. Um, weren't sure that we had enough personnel with the injuries to get it done. But uh, I think it does energize us offensively and defensively. The problems that we usually have when we're in the press defense is if we're not scoring, mm -hmm. the energy is down. But as long as we're putting the ball in the basket occasionally, the defensive intensity stays up. And I think it wears the opponent down. In both cases, uh, the second half was much better for us because perhaps the other team was a little bit tired, missed some shots, yeah. or also it takes them out of their offense. They're not able to set up what they want to do, and they pretty much have to react on the court. And uh, teams that are good at that are going to cause us problems, but teams that don't react well on the court will, will be causing them, them some problems. Now, Coach, you finally have everybody back healthy this week. Um, Ali played well on Saturday and played more minutes than she did against Wednesday when she sort of re-aggravated that injury. How much does that full bench depth really help in terms of being able to rotate players, keep players fresh down the stretch? Uh, it, it helps immeasurably. I thought at the beginning of the year that we would be a very deep team. I thought going into conference tournament, we would have 10 people that we could put on the court, which is valuable since last year we only had seven or eight in the rotation. Um, the injuries kind of you know, put that on the back burner, but I think as we get people healthy, get more people minutes and more experience, that that, uh, that depth is going to help us come tournament time. Now let's look forward to this coming week, Coach. And first up, you have Radford, who you know, maybe hasn't had the production that people expected them to have this year. What do you see in that team and the Highlanders? And you're going on the road to play at the Deadman Center. Well, they're a very good team. They've been close in a lot of games. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're a dangerous team because they're looking for their first win. Um, we're hoping that that's not on Thursday. But uh, we can't come out any less intense than we uh, than we'd normally do. We've got, to, uh, we've got to pressure them defensively. We've got to attack them offensively. More than likely, they're going to sit in the zone, so we'll have to work on that this week. Um, but they're, they're a talented team, uh, not very big, a lot of guards, but they do drive to the basket, and uh, they create contact, and they go to the free throw line. So it's going to be a, a real good challenge up at Radford. Yeah, I wanted to talk specifically about their ability to drive and draw fouls. That's something that a couple of times this year your inside players have struggled with, Heather Tobeck picking up early fouls. And obviously, that's a huge um, hamper to your squad when she picks up those early fouls and has to sit on the bench for a lot of the first half. Has that attributed to some of these first half struggles, early foul trouble for some of your big players, which really allows other teams' post players to go to work? It, it could be. It could be. I, I think it's, uh, it's a little lack of intensity early. Yeah. You know, the, the fouls that we pick up aren't good fouls. Yeah. They're, they're sloppy ones where we're out of position. And I think if we do a better job at that, we'll be much better defensively. The second half uh, in both the Asheville and the Gardner-Webb game, all they did was put their hands straight up, mm -hmm. you know, as they're supposed to. And they didn't get called for any fouls. We forced misses. We got rebounds, and we ran it to the other end. And, Coach, you talked about Radford. They like to sit in that zone and kind of pack it in. Um, your team hasn't shot tremendously well from outside the arc, but still you have a lot of shooters available. Uh, is this going to be one of those cases where you try to shoot them out of the zone or you just have to work and find the gaps within the zone? Well, I think first of all we need to get out in transition. We need to stop them from scoring and run the ball back at them. We're, we're best when we're doing that. Mm -hmm. um, against the zone, however, we, we, we have eight girls who can shoot the ball. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is we need to find the combination of who's making them that day. Um, you know, one day it'll be Kendall Skurzik, the next day Jacqueline Reagan, then mm -hmm. it'll be Raven Williams. We need to find the ones who are making shots that day and make sure that they play a little bit more. We do need to throw the ball inside also. They're not a very big team. They have a couple of post players, so if we can get some foul trouble there, then uh, it kind of eliminates their depth. 
Uh, Coach, I want to talk a little bit about going forward with these injuries. Uh, Deja Brown's been nicked up. It's been very tough playing through it all. Um, still a little bit nicked up. Uh, what is her leadership and, and still her ability to just compete even though when she's not at 100% mean to this club? Well, Deja Brown will never, never tell you she's hurt. Mm -hmm. She's always going to go out there and battle unless you drag her out of the lineup. Um, she's, a, she's an energy player, offensively and defensively. She just provides so much en energy. She enjoys playing the game so much that she just, I guess she leads by example. Mm -hmm. She drags people along by how she plays. But, uh, you know, I, it, it was very difficult when she wasn't playing. Very happy to have her back, and we're going to do whatever it takes during the week to make sure that she can play on Thursdays and Saturdays. I wanted to ask a question about Raven Williams as well. Uh, she's back from injury, and we've seen her uh, step up and play the one some these last few games. What does that allow your team to do with her at the one rather than playing the two, as she traditionally did? Well, what it does is it takes Day Day off the ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, Day Day's big problem on offense was that uh, when she would dribble the ball up and try to penetrate, mm -hmm. she would do it without anyone passing the ball, and five people would be looking at her. This way, with Raven moving the ball and getting it around, by the time it comes back to Day Day, the players are looking in other spots. Nobody's really focused on just her, and it's opened up a lot more driving lanes for her. Is that also help with the players not hedging on her left hand? We know she likes to go left, and we've seen that a lot. Is that also to kind of free her up to go to her left? Yes, I, I think it does. I, I, the people play her to her left. I still think she can beat them to the left. She seems to have this mental block that she can't get around them when yeah. they're playing her there. But, uh, you know, we'll continue to work on that. But, yes, I think taking her off the ball allows her to do that. Now, looking even farther ahead past Radford, you have Winthrop, who is definitely one of the best teams in the conference. They have one of the better players in the conference. Talk about the Eagles and everything they can do. They're very tough. They're very tough, especially at home. Uh, Dequisha McClanahan, preseason player of the year, mm -hmm. uh, she's just terrific. She does it all. She scores. She handles the ball for them. She distributes. Uh, defensively, she's very good. Uh, Shaquilla Nunn playing in the post, a very good shot blocker, takes up a lot of space, and she's becoming a better scorer also. Mm -hmm. uh, Erica Williams is a freshman out there who is probably the most talented freshman in the league. She and Kayla Keys. Um, so it's, it's a challenging group to go play. Um, they'll sit in a zone also most yeah. of the time. They will press a little bit. So uh, we'll just have to be prepared to battle down there because they do play very well at home. You talked about McClanahan and how good she is, preseason player of the year. What do you have to do to shut her down? Is there someone you look to to shut her down, or is it really just a team effort of collapsing when you see her penetrating and trying to force the ball out of her hands? Well, um, I, I don't think there's so much talent on that team yeah. that I don't think you can just focus on her. Uh, last year at the conference tournament, we had a little bit of success trapping the ball screens that they ran for her and um, you know, took the ball out of her hands that way. But she's going to shoot if she wants to shoot. And if she's making shots that day, it's going to be a long day. I think all you need to do is just make it difficult on her and then make sure that you get the rebound if they do miss and then run it the other way. And you talked about Winthrop and uh, their zone as well. What makes it a little bit different from Radford's zone? What's a different challenge that you kind of have to face with Winthrop? Well, Radford's zone is, uh, is, is a basic zone. They're, they're pretty much staying back, trying to make you shoot threes. Winthrop's is much more active. They'll get in the passing lanes, try to get those passes, uh, because they know that they have Shaquilla Nunn at the back protecting yeah. the basket. Uh, so it'll be the same zone, basically, but two different ways that you'll have to go about attacking it. You mentioned Nunn down low for Winthrop. Uh, is it a good thing to have already faced one of the better post players and Katrina Green to kind of boost your team's confidence? They were able to at least limit her productivity. I don't know that you're ever going to stop Green or none, but is, is it a confidence booster heading into Winthrop, having already played a post player like that? I think it gives us a little bit of confidence. I think they're different players. Yeah. Uh, Katrina Green's more offensive-minded, uh, but uh, they, they are, they're, are, they're big girls. Mm -hmm. uh, they can catch, they can score, and they can definitely defend down there. So... I would agree with you. And going forward, and I know you, you're starting to get that rotation. Have you figured out your eight or nine uh, player rotation that you really kind of feel confident in going with? I think we would have an eight or nine person rotation if we knew that all the players were going to show up on the same day. Yeah. The inconsistency is the problem right now. Like Treasure Avery has played great back-to-back -back games. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a little lull before that. As I mentioned before, Brenna Robbins had a lull a couple of games before that. So if we can get consistent efforts out of everybody, I think there's 10 players that we can put on that court and feel very comfortable. I wanted to ask about uh, Deb Hedden as well. She's another one that 
doesn't necessarily show up on the stat sheet. She's not going to really light up the scoreboard night in, night out. Has the ability to put up points, but really, it seems like her biggest value on this team is she really gets in there, fights for rebounds, plays solid defense, and uh, is great running through the offense and s s creating opportunities. Yeah, she has a good feel for the game. Very good feel for the game, and um, her, big, her biggest thing is I don't think she realizes how good she can be. Because sometimes she plays as hard as she can, and she's one of the best players on the court. Other times she kind of coasts, falls asleep, and she's not as effective. So again, it's, it's the consistency. If we can get them playing all consistently hard, I think we'll be fine. Finally, Coach, a general look forward to this week. Radford and Winthrop both on the road. You're back to 3-4 and four in conference play, which is basically right in the middle of, of the conference. There's seven or eight teams that are 4-3 and three or 3-4. Three and four. How important is this week? and moving forward within the Big South play? I think the importance of this week is just establishing consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, wins or losses, if we go into Radford and everybody plays hard and we continue to improve, and we go into Winthrop and everyone plays hard and we continue to improve, I think that's just as important as the W's and L's right now. Um, because that means that as we go forward through the second time, the second time we get them through the conference, that we'll be more prepared. All right, thank you Coach Reinson for joining us as always. And we look forward to seeing you all next week on The Coach's Corner. Thank you.